Hey guys, welcome back to Team Deathslinger. My name is Peter, and today we're going to be looking at my BT15 Hexablaumon deck profile. So, Hexablaumon is a card that I have wanted to be good for a long time. I still do not think he is good, but we have enough support around him to make him playable. So, starting with the eggs, we're going to be running four copies of BT6 Kiaromon. We should be stripping sources, so this should work as our draw engine. Uh, if we are not stripping sources, we are doing something wrong. So, when you trash a source, you draw a card. Fantastic egg. Then we got the new BT15 Betamon. We will not be using the on play. We don't have any cards that actually let us play out this Betamon, but the inheritable jamming is really important because now when we play against decks that have X antibody uh, underneath their stack, we can still get jamming on our Hexablaumon. So uh, that is what this guy is for. He is the primary level four that we uh, level three that we look for to have in our stack. Then because we are trying to control the opponent and stop them from doing anything fun, uh, we're running three copies of Sayakomon. Uh, they can't reduce Digivolution costs, so no training cards here. And three copies of Madoki Betamon. They cannot gain memory except with Tamer effects. So just hard Floodgates and our Betamon. Then four copies of Ikakumon from BT14. This, when Digivolving, is going to trash two sources and when attacking until end of opponent's turn. One of your opponent's Digimon with less sources than this card cannot attack. So this pairs fantastically with the Betamon. Um, you can promote Betamon, go into Ikakumon, swing a jamming check, tr you're trashing two sources and stopping them from attacking with something until next turn. So, uh, very powerful, and that's going to set up for the Zudamon Ace nicely. Then four copies of Kumamon on Digivolve, we're going to trash a source. Uh, it is a hybrid, so we are running four Tommies, so that we can, um, you know, do Tommy shenanigans with this. And then three Kori Kakumons to go on top, and to go on top of the Tommies. Uh, if we have a hybrid or Tommy underneath him, one of our opponent's Digimon with no sources, can't attack or block until end of their next turn. This is another great card to set up for the Zudamon Ace, which we run three copies of. Um, when Digivolving and on play, we're going to trash two sources and then return one card with no sources to the hand. In a deck where we want to trash sources, this works great either just as a, a two-source trash and then return the hand, or even just to return um, two sources uh, off the bottom of a card. So this is just great to have in general. The main level five that we're looking at is the Chris Pale Dramon from BT5. Um, I like this card mostly because of Security Attack plus one. I think Hexablaumon is a very passive card, and if you want to give it enough speed to really contend with what people are playing right now, um, I feel like the Security Attack plus one is kind of mandatory. When Digivolving, it's going to trash the bottom Digivolution card of all of your opponent's Digimon, which is actually really nice sometimes, especially against some wideboard decks. Um, you can start stripping eggs from underneath everything and set up for Hexablaumon to kind of freeze the entire board. Um, so he's pretty cool. Then the boy himself, BT5 Hexablaumon, when attacking, you trash two Digivolution cards from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Then if they have a Digimon with no sources, you gain jamming. In all turns, Digimon with no Digivolution cards cannot attack or block. So ideally, you strip all the sources on as much as you can from your opponent, uh, and then use Hexablaumon to lock them down. Uh, so that's, that's what we're going for. Um, I really like him. <laughs> I think he's so cool. Uh, unfortunately, I have not played him successfully up till now. Um, pairing with the Hexablaumon, I am still sticking with the uh, BT6 Azulongmon. When Digivolving, you're going to trash one Digivolution card from the bottom of all of your opponent's Digimon, then gain a memory for each of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards, and for each of those Digimon, you will gain Security plus one. So this is a good way to try and close out games. He is not our primary boss monster, but he is very, very useful. Then I go one copy of the Azulong Ace. Uh... Sometimes you just need an Azulong Ace. Uh, when Digivolving, you can return a level 5 or lower to hand, unsuspend him, and then on deletion, you get to delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest level. Um, this is one of the only Ace cards where I'm not necessarily afraid of it being deleted. I feel like the on deletion effect is a high enough return for the risk of the overflow. Um, so I feel like it's appropriate to run it at 1. Uh, if you change some cards around, you could probably make space to run it at 2, but I have him at 1. Then two copies of Blitz Omnimon. Uh, if you do manage to clear out the security um, with a Zulongmon or stall out with Hexablaumon long enough, this is just a good way to end the game. Two copies of Sorai, trash top four of one of your opponent's Digimon, and then till the end of your opponent's turn, their Digimon with no Digivolution cards can't attack. So this is kind of... The reason we run this is because when Hexablaumon dies, you're in a very, very vulnerable position. And what this is going to do is going to strip the sources on any stack that they have on board, um, and then make it so, ideally, most of their Digimon can't attack and stop you from losing the game. So that's why that's there. Three copies of Mental Training. Uh, I would like it at four, but the deck is tight on space because of all the Tamers we have. Uh, if you really want to, you could probably drop an Azulong Ace or one of our Tamers for another one of these. 
two copies of the BT14 Jokido on play. You're going to strip a source. Um, and then on your turn, when a source is stripped, you can suspend him to gain a memory. So effectively, he's a two cost tamer that'll start netting you value um, the more you have him on the board. Two copies of the old Sora and Joe. If you really, really wanted to, you could drop these and go four on the Jokidos. I still like these because they have a lot of potential to gain you a lot of memory. And when you attack with a blue Digimon, you get to trash up to two sources from the uh, bottom of an opponent's Digimon. So this can start grabbing you memory really fast and help you strip off the extra sources from Digimon um, as the opponent starts responding to the fact that you're stripping sources. So it kind of shuts down some hybrid sometimes. Um, it stops the opponent from just Digivolving to a level five and leaving you in a tough spot um, after you've already stripped all their sources. So pretty good card. And then four cards of the Menace himself, Kami Himi, uh, security effect, you play him. On play, you strip three sources from the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, and then he has an inheritable when attacking until the end of your opponent's next turn. One of their Digimon with no Digivolution sources can't attack or block. So if you play this and you have a Joe Kido on board, you're effectively paying two to strip three sources. Uh, if you have Hexablau on board, you're just basically locking down whatever they're playing after the fact. Um, it's just good. Um, I like this deck. This is a little bit of a pet project of mine. Uh, I hope you like this deck profile. Give it a try. Uh, let me know where you think I could improve it. Um, and that's all we got for this deck profile. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.